Hello, everybody. Today we will take a look at the setting up of a extrusion problem. Um, we will use ANSYS Polyflow to set up this problem. The problem description looks something like this, where the material will be pushed in at 10 centimeter cube per second from this input. This region is rotating at 2 pi radians per second. And after the extruder has pushed this material, it will go out of this outlet. And here it will it will have the option of expanding. So there will be a free surface in this region at the exit of the extruder where the material can take a different form. We will set up this whole problem using ANSYS Polyflow. And this video will show you how to set up the case. So we open ANSYS Workbench first. Select Polyflow, which is under Fluid Flow. You can import the mesh. Once you have imported the mesh, you open the setup. You can see half of the mesh. So we are working with on the part of the solution, and this part is the symmetry part. This section is the rotating region, and this region is the free surface region. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create an FEM task. This is the main menu. And under the main menu, you will have the polyflow data, which will highlight the task that you need to do. So in this case, it's requesting you to create a new task. Click on it, and then it will show that you need to perform these three options. So Right now it is set to FEM task. It's a steady state problem and it's a 2D planar geometry. What we are going to do is we are going to change the 2D planar geometry to 2.5D axis symmetric geometry. And then we will select the FEM task. Once we have selected all of them, we will accept the current setup. Now, as soon as you go out of that section, out of the previous section, Polyflow will then ask you to move to a specific region to set up the problem. So now we move to create a subtask. Over here, we will set up the <clears throat> problem definition. We'll select generalized Newtonian isothermal flow problem. And once you click on this, it will ask for the name. So you can give it a new name like die swell. You can see domain die swell has been created. And now under this, you can go to global parameter definition to change some material data or you can go back by using the upper level menu. Over here, we will move into the domain subtask, which is now highlighted. And you can see there are two domains highlighted, the inner domain and the outer domain. And as the flow, as the solution requires remeshing, because this region has a tendency of bulging up and hence there is a free surface, we essentially need two domains. Otherwise, if this was a straight flow, we don't need two domains. So domain one is completely enclosed in walls and domain two is open to uh, open for the surface to develop on its own. And uh, we will set up the meshing part in a little bit, but that is why we have two specific domains. We'll move to the upper limit uh, menu and we will set up the material data now. Under the material data, now we will set up the viscosity. So click on shear dependent viscosity. Uh, we are going to use the cross law. In the cross law is defined over here. 
the frac is the frac. As you can see over here, T net is in this part of the equation and the exponential part is here. The zero shear viscosity, that is the frac, will set that to 85,000. We will set the natural time, that is the T net, to 0 0.2. And the exponent we will change to 0 0.3. Click on the upper level menu, upper level menu again, to get out of the shear dependent viscosity menu. Now we will move to boundary condition. We will click on upper level menu again and it will automatically highlight the flow boundary condition. Click on flow boundary condition and now you can select. Once you select a specific boundary, you will see it has been highlighted over here. To select the first boundary, that is BS1. Click on modify. And we change it to inflow. Under the inflow, we will click on volumetric flow rate. And we will change it to 10. The unit that is in centimeter cube per second. We now move to the upper level menu. Select BS2, which is the outer walls. So this will be a zero velocity outer wall along BS2. We keep it as is. BS3 is the free surface. And we set it up as free surface. So now as soon as you set it up as a free surface, it will ask you to set up the boundary condition for flow a moving surface. Click on boundary condition for moving surface. So now as the boundary condition for moving surface is based on these two nodes, we will have to provide the conditions. Select the no condition along BS2 and modify. This is the intersection of BS2 and BS3, and we will click on position imposed and then select upper level menu. Click upper level menu again. Now you're back in the kinematic condition. Retain the default setting for normal force and direction of motion. So this will remain constant and direction of motion will not make any changes to it. Now click on upwinding in kinematic equation. And then click on upper level menu to return to flow boundary condition. And set the condition for BS4, that is the flow exit. Set it to normal and tangential forces in post. And accept the value of zero for the upper level menu. And hence we just click on upper level menu twice. Yes. Now we move to the condition where the rotating screw is. Modify. Remember the screw is rotating at 2 pi radians per second. We'll click on normal and tangential velocities imposed. Once you're in this menu, click on upper level menu twice. It will ask you whether you want to hold this data. Click on no. 
we want to impose the velocity. I'll select W velocity linear function of coordinates. So the first value A will be zero. The second value B is the, which will be two pi, so 6.2832. And the third value C will also be zero. And click yes. We click on the upper level menu now. It will automatically highlight the global remaining section, which needs to be updated. I click on it. Local remaking. We'll select on the SD2 for local remeshing. That means we'll have to select SD1 and remove it from the remeshing region. So on the remeshing will be done in SD2. Click on upper level menu. And it essentially is going to use the method of splines to remesh. Click on method of splines. Select SD1, which is this connection. This is part of the inlet section. Click on the upper level menu and select PS4, modify. This is part of the outlet sections, upper level menu. We click on upper level menu again. And again, so we are back in the dice world menu. Under FEM task one, we are going to define the stream function. We'll assign the stream function, condition of stream function for field one. And we will change the values for X to 5. And Y to 0. Go back to upper level menu. Now we'll have to define the output. Go to upper level menu again. Here we'll have outputs. And the output will be axis. Click on upper level menu. So this is the current uh, unit. We can change the unit. We will select centimeter gram seconds and Celsius upper level menu. You can see it has been changed. Go back to upper level menu again. And now the setup is complete. We will save and accept. We'll accept it. Now these are the default resolve files. Continue. Once you have done that, we run the solution. Update. You can see the solution update by right click and opening listing viewer. You can see that the computation has succeeded. So we can close it and the solution tab has been updated. Now you can go to edit and look into the results. Now we take a look at the results. Click on the Z axis to look at it from the front. We can immediately see that the free surface has been modified over here. 
Now we know that this is an axis metric section, so let's add the transformation. The principal axis is the y axis. We need two instances. And two passages. Once we apply, we see the full range now. If you want to see the mesh, we can look into the wireframe and show the mesh. And you can see how the mesh has been deformed to capture the free surface. Now over here we can now post process the pressure distribution. Select pressure and select the surface. Click OK. Apply pressure. You can see how the pressure develops in the extrusion region and how it reduces as it expands. You can also annotate. So go to insert. Next, right for the flow results. Apply for the flow results. Apply and you can set it up. You can change the location as well. So that it does not intersect with any of the Contours. Next, you can copy this and show the velocities. You can see. High velocity is close to here and no velocity is close to stationary. We can also create vectors. Select the surfaces. And apply. And change the symbol to a 3D arrow and increase the size to three and apply. Then, as you can see, then there are tangential forces over here and because of the rotation. And then, as they converge together, they become straight and go forward. You can overlay that with the velocity plot and get more details. In the vectors also, you can select normalize symbols and that will essentially give you a much better feel of how the flow is moving through the system. And that's the end of this uh, calculation and the results analysis. Thank you very much.